Hey guys, it's Ewan with the Air Zoo. It's been a minute since we last visited our restoration center, so let's check out the significant progress on both our FM2 Wildcat and SPD Dauntless restorations. The Wildcat now has its engine in place, which was mounted early last month. To bring us up to date with this project, we checked in with lead restoration volunteer, Phil. Yeah, so when we mounted this engine, there's a, been a few things that we've done here. Uh, obviously what we have to do is we have to get um, everything between here and the firewall installed. Oil lines, um, actuator rods, wiring, whatever, okay, uh, before we could make the rest of the cowling. This cowling here, we got sections that have to go on here as well. So what we've done is we've installed the oil tank up there. Uh, we've uh, put the ductwork on. Well, the ductwork was on here, but we had to put this ductwork on. We installed the oil cooler down here. All right, it's kind of an interesting uh, deal because you got a, a, a duct on the other side that's, that's on the top. So the air blows through kind of in a reverse direction for the oil cooler. Mounting the uh, fuel filter here, the fuel pump over there. Uh, so we got some work. Uh, we're coming out of the fuel tank down below and we'll be going back to the selector and then coming forward and so we've, we've been starting to install these um, these oil and fuel lines um, and connecting that all together because if you don't do that ahead of time you can't well it gets in the way of working on the cowling and stuff like that so that's what our focus is right now is to get like they installed this and got this all hooked up here these lines, okay, a lot of them are vacuum lines and other instrumentation lines. Um, so we've got that hooked up. So it's coming along, but it is really, it's really labor intensive. They got the cowl flaps here. They got them installed and working. You can see the, uh, the actuating rod there and there's a little crank inside the cockpit, you know, for, for the cowl flaps to go up and go down. Um, in flight they're down, but on the ground they would be up to allow for easier airflow around the engine to keep the engine cooler on the ground. So, yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's coming along, but it is labor intensive, and um, I've stopped praying for patience anymore because uh, it's so frustrating sometimes. To get no, I'm just kidding. Well, but what's 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 the most frustrating part or most difficult part to install in this whole engine assembly? Uh, I don't know. It's not so much. Um, frustrating once you figure it out but figuring things out we don't have uh, assembly none of the assembly instructions or how they did the process of building uh, an airplane or a car or whatever it is it's all about the process and that, like that's what these guys are, are uh, fighting with right now just sim doing simple things like you know these these Zeus fasteners are just in there but they're not clipped in there so they stay in you know little things like that it's like how does that how do you do that and we're learning that stuff as we go along, which is gratifying once you figure it out and it gets done. But before that, it can be like, Ugh, you know. So anyway, but that's part of the juice of why I come here and guys like Gordon here come here. Um, that's part of the fun of it. So. We want to use as much of the original as possible as opposed to fabricating something new, okay? Uh, that, and in fact, that's a part of our spec, is to, that the Navy uh, requires of us, is to use as much of the original uh, airplane as possible that survived. Uh, much of it didn't, but a lot of it did, so. Now, between us, is that, is that a pain, or is that, is that a fun challenge? Both. <laughs> As Phil mentioned, we try to use as much of the original material off the aircraft as possible. But when we can't, we take full advantage of modern techniques and technology, such as carbon fiber and a little bit of 3D printing here and there. Our team also must learn techniques used in the original production of the aircraft. You can see here some team members working out how to properly attach the fasteners used on the cowling. This requires teamwork, research, and a lot of patience. Let's see what Gordon's been up to. See, a little spring? Oh yeah. 
closes. And where, and where will that go? Uh, right, 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 right back here. Right. It's mounted right here. Like that. And what was that for? This takes four gauge shotgun shell, which goes in here, closes, the pilot pushes the button in there, the charge is uh, shot, and the exhaust, there's no, there's no pellets in it, of course, it's just the gases. Go through this tube, go around, spin that uh, thing there, which spins the propeller, and it exhausts out the other tube. That's how you start the thing. It's amazing. A shotgun shell. The Wildcat team are still aiming to have the project complete about this time next year. There's a lot of work to be done, but I think they can do it. Our SBD Dauntless restoration project is also progressing nicely, so I ambushed Bill to see what he's been up to. Hey Bill, yes, sir. can you explain to me quickly what, what this, this thing is? Because I've been hearing it from my office. Oh, okay, okay. Up there, I just hear a... Ooh, nice, nice. Camera. This is the bottom skin for the SBD, okay? And the bottom skin has got so many inspection holes, access holes, that we actually took the new aluminum, put it on the bottom, put the old one on top, and drilled into the wood, so that would be our pattern, to match the hole pattern for the rivets. And now we put it on the mill, and we're cutting out the access holes. The inspection holes, access holes. Uh, there's some control linkage that goes to the rudder. I, yeah, right up back here. So we're cutting all the holes out on the mill, and that's what we're up to. So you've essentially, you're remaking this entire kind of section of the, the aircraft. Yeah, the, the lower main skin is two pieces of aluminum, and each one's 11 feet long. So that's why you see it mounted on this big board on the bridge board. We're doing one at a time. And why, why are we not using the original, because obviously we try and use as much of the original metal as possible. How come we're not using? If you come down here, there's so much damage in the original, okay, that to patch it was almost as much work as replacing the whole thing. So we're going to replace the entire skin. It's Plus the, the new skin will also make it much stronger, and that's kind of a structural point of the aircraft right in the center. So it's getting two pieces of new skin. This, was, is, the, this is the first one, and we hope to get this on in a couple weeks. It wasn't until kind of this, this part of the aircraft was taken off, and then you just kind of look really closely and you can start to, obviously you got the big holes here, but even all the way across down this whole piece of metal, there's all these little dings oh, and holes. It's and crazy. This is the good one too. The next one's even worse. In fact, it's right up there. Oh yeah, you can kind of see yeah, some of the holes in it up there. Okay. So I'm hoping later today we'll have this off over on the bench and we can take the old skin off it and you can see what the new one looks like. Very exciting. Very cool. Come back in a couple hours. Will do. Thank you very much. You so I did, I, I went away, I filmed some other stuff, and then a couple hours later, I returned to see how Bill was getting on with that SBD floor. Uh-oh. What do you mean, uh-oh? <laughs> no. Run away! <laughs> no, not now, Ewan. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no perfect. <laughs> not now. So you can see Bill there just milling out the final hole on that section of the SBD floor. Bill's really good. Yeah. I think it's through. Still low. Is, is it through here? I don't think so. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, yeah. It is over there. I think it this is. is. Yeah, I think it's clear. Is. is this? I think it's clear. Yeah, because you already threw the board right there. Okay. Yeah, you can see it from that side better. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. So is that, oh. this one done? Oh, it's far from done. <laughs> we gotta take this to the bench now. These small ones, I'll do these by hand. And then we have to deburr all these, take this off, deburr all these holes, get them ready, and then they're ready to go up on the plane. Is that it though, huh, final cuts? Ooh, oh, you got that. me again. Yeah. We're going out that way, and then we're gonna go around the corner to where the clinic is. I'm not going to leave. Well, we need one guy underneath and over on this I'll side. I'll take this one because this is floppy. I'll, I'll go first. I'll take that far side.
So as soon as the floor was on the table, work continued. Some of the Clecos were removed to allow the guys to drill in those final rivet holes. So I figured I'd come back a few days later to see their progress. So a few days later, when I got to the restoration center, the floor was missing. So I strolled to the SPD bay and there it was. Temporarily installed back onto the SPD. Look how good that looks. The guys put it on the aircraft just to make sure the fit was good and that everything was aligned as it should be. There is still a lot of work to be done before this floor can be installed properly on the SBD. If you want to keep up to date with the SBD-1 restoration and our FM2 Wildcat restoration, make sure to follow us to receive future updates. If you want to help fund our restoration center, you can at airzoo.org support. And of course, if you want to visit our aircraft and our restoration center in person, Pay us a visit and plan your trip today at airzoo.org slash plan your visit. We'll see you next time.